time is it? It's 1227. So I'm going to start. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Uh, my name is Ken Tracy. Please don't knock on the door. Thank you. Sorry. Just laid my two babies down to sleep. I saw some guys walking the neighborhoods uh, putting flyers on. I think uh, we had a storm or two a week or two back. And uh, I think they're probably siding roofing guys uh, that seem to come out every time we have a big thunderstorm. We had a little hail a week or two ago, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what my thoughts or opinions are of roofing and siding guys. It seems almost uh, like an insurance scam, to be honest with you. Uh, every time we have a thunderstorm, they say there's damage to the roof and they come on through. And they say they're replacing roofs in the neighborhood and they'll, uh, insurance will more than likely pay for it. I don't know if it's a scam, but it seems hard to believe as a guy that was a realtor for as long as I and knows that roofs are fairly expensive, how easily you can get them replaced, apparently, uh, by talking to a roofer and what have you. But again, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon to you. My name is Ken Tracy, and uh, this is Coffee with Ken. It's a gorgeous day in March. I think it is Wednesday afternoon, just about 1230. I think it's March 13th, possibly. It may be some other day. I'm not totally sure. Uh, again, I said this is Coffee with Ken, which is a show I started five years ago. A uh, show... Um, I started when I was struggling with a lot of things in life and uh, realized talking about my stuff made me feel a little better. And I started doing it live over on Facebook on Saturday mornings, just kind of going, hey, I'm living in a dark apartment. I'm struggling. I got this. I'm stressed. I woke up at night and I felt this way and I'm hungover and this and that. Uh, and five years ago, I kind of went to work on myself. And Coffee with Ken is the story of a guy uh, who's trying to get a little better every day, but still struggles and still uh, fights the good fight and sometimes probably fights life more than he needs to and should learn to just roll with it and be okay uh, with the world as it presents itself. Uh, but that's not always that easy for me to do. So again, I'm working on myself every day, not always getting better, but I'm trying to get a little better every day. And I have struggles, uh, different sort of struggles than I did five years ago. Uh, but I still have struggles just the same. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the show's called Coffee with Ken, and it isn't just a show about me uh, talking. Got to make sure none of those little silver birch buds are in my coffee cup. It is also, for those that have been watching a while, you know it's also a show about me uh, sharing my love of coffee. When the conversation runs slow... I tend to break out the coffee and start uh, taking sips, or sometimes I'll do one of these and show you what we're looking at if I got nothing else to say. But uh, right now I'm feeling like I got a lot to say, and even if I didn't, I got this nice hot cup of coffee in front of me, and I'm excited to have my first sip. My hope is that wherever you are, uh, whatever you're doing, uh, that you got a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Mm. Oh, I'll tell you what. I kind of poo-pooed this coffee a little bit uh, uh, the first several times I tried it. It's the French van Vanilla by 8 O'Clock Coffee. And I bought it, I don't know, two weeks ago because my regular coffee was not on sale and ridiculously expensive at the store. I found it. Uh, I found it somewhat offensive, the price uh, they were suggesting. So I tried this. I uh, was mixing it in with my regular coffees and... Uh, uh, didn't find it so, so exciting. But over the last several days, I was drinking one of my favorite coffees, uh, the Starbucks uh, Toasted Coconut Mocha. And I was drinking a lot of it. And it's kind of nice to switch it up a little bit and enjoying this. And I'm going to have another sip. Mm. Oh. Lisa Smith asked me if I'm going to enact her local coffee idea. She suggested the other day uh, that I get a P.O. box and have my viewers send uh, local coffees uh, to my P.O. box, <coughs> excuse me, and do a taste test for them uh, and kind of review them uh, on my live show. 
Uh, Lisa, am I going to do it? Not at this moment. I have a lot of things going on in life, and although I think it's a neat idea, uh, although my show is about my love of coffee, it's not really about my love of coffee as much as that's just kind of a prop uh, that I use to share my adventure that is life. So I'm probably not going to dive into that idea. I think it's a neat idea. It's funny, I've been doing this show for a while. Uh, for about the last two and a half years, I've been pretty purposeful, uh, hoping to become a uh, content creator on it and figure out how to use my stories and my ability to tell stories as a uh, platform to help people and build a career and build a business model and uh, uh, kind of maybe look at it as an online therapist, if you will, uh, while I'm giving myself therapy. But my point was, I used to visit a lot of local coffee shops, and I'd go live, and I'd walk through, and I'd give the tour, and, you know, they were popular. But again, I think, uh, although it's called Coffee with Ken, and there's coffee on my mug, and I'm drinking coffee, uh, I think the show's really just the story of one guy and his journey through life as he works his way through the challenges we all have. And uh, speaking of challenges, before I pushed the live button this morning or this afternoon, uh, I laid my two babies down to sleep and I was debating calling it various things. I call it Coffee with Ken when I don't know what else I want to describe it as. I post a lot of videos about uh, sobriety and I stopped drinking and uh, smoking pot two and a half years ago and haven't had a drink or a smoke since. And I share a lot of my stories about that on uh, social media, and they get some of my biggest viewership. As a result, I have viewers reaching out that are struggling, be it about, I don't know, uh, looking for advice or looking for tips or just trying to get, you know, pick my brain and maybe uh, share my experiences a little bit. And I had a guy reach out to me the other day, a uh, young guy, I think he said he was 32, sent me a message. He and his wife have two little ones. They're both every day and fairly heavy drinkers. And he was hoping, he didn't want to give it up drinking, but he wanted to cut back. And he asked if I had any advice. And the only thing I could respond to him is that didn't work for me, the thought of cutting back. I quit drinking when I was 53 years old. I probably thought of cutting back a thousand times in the previous 30 years or what have you, thought of switching to light beer, drinking more water between beers, avoiding hard liquor altogether and what have you. Uh, but the only thing that really worked for me uh, was stopping drinking and making the commitment to stop drinking. And as soon as I said, I'm not gonna drink tomorrow, uh, two and a half years later, uh, I really haven't thought about it a whole heck of a lot and the temptation is gone. I know for me, if I was trying to cut back, and I talk about this with calories, I talk about this with a lot of things. If you're trying to cut back, uh, you're constantly being tempted and you wanna go get another beer or another bowl of ice cream or go to the casino one more time. And uh, the only way that I found for me uh, to stop was to stop cold turkey. And uh, uh, to stop cold turkey. And again, I did that two and a half years ago, and I say this a lot, life's not perfect uh, when you stop drinking, but you are better, and you feel pride, and you don't feel there's a, the calling or the craving to run to the fridge and grab another Heineken and count them and hope there's at least 12 left, or otherwise I'm gonna have to run to the store today uh, and pick up some more. And again, I think of all the things that passed my time during the previous whole bunch of years and things like yard work or golfing or bowling or going out to dinner with my wife or going to visit friends. Uh, I realized now that I stopped drinking, uh, were all uh, uh, kind of excuses uh, to uh, drink beer. And not saying I didn't have any good times. Uh, I certainly did. I think you can have the craziest times when you're drinking or partying, as I used to think it was. Uh, but slowly, my partying looked uglier and uglier in my eyes. And it was just a guy that was, you know, getting older in his 50s, sitting on the couch holding a Heineken and uh, hoping I didn't fall asleep and drop it in my lap and spill it on the couch because that was always embarrassing. 
were there any biographies that I read about others that had alcohol problems? No. <laughs> I've never read a biography uh, about somebody else that had alcohol problems. I didn't really do any research. You know, I'm, I was aware that there's people, I know who Betty Ford is. I know there's an alcoholic synonymous. I know uh, the bars are more filled with people spending money they probably don't have uh, every night. Uh, but I never really did any research or looked into it a whole heck of a lot. One night, it was a real dark night. And again, it was October 28th, 2021. Uh, I uh, uh, was feeling bad and feeling down and feeling stressed and feeling like my life was crumbling. And I said, hey, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to fix this whole big thing that is my life. But I guarantee drinking beer every day isn't helping it. And so I stopped and uh, really haven't looked back. And i uh, uh, tell you what, that's one thing I can hang my hat on and feel pride about uh, every day. Share a little silly story to you uh, or with you. I, uh, again, I talk about it. I'm not good at moderation. I went to Aldi yesterday. Honestly, long story, but I needed to get $100 out of my uh, uh, card. And uh, they give you cash when you buy something. So I go into Aldi and I was... You know, they, you can take a cash, uh, I don't know, withdrawal uh, when you buy some. So I went into Aldi, walked around, saw, I don't know if you guys know what Nutty Butters are or Nutty Bars are. They're in a yellow box and they're peanut butter and chocolate and like little wafer cookies. And they are so good. And I've always struggled with them. And I bought the Aldi pack yesterday and I was starving. I uh, hadn't had lunch yet, and it was like 1 o'clock already. And had one in the parking lot. Had another uh, when I got to the grocery store where I ended up going in and having a large salad. And after that, went to Starbucks, and there were six in a box. And had one in the parking lot at Starbucks. Went into Starbucks. I think I had one in my hand. And I'm sitting there at Starbucks. I already had four, and they come in packs or two. There, I knew there was two left in my scooter. I rode my scooter yesterday. And they were calling to me. And rather than leave them in my scooter and leave them calling to me and leaving the temptation that was those nutty bars, I went out and finished the last two packs uh, for a total of 1,740 calories worth of nutty bars and uh, a lot of sugar and chocolate and unhealthy stuff that my body didn't need. But I cannot tell you, and this comes back to drinking, the relief I felt uh, when I decided, hey, I'm just going to finish these and get rid of them, and then the temptation will be over. Because once I break the seal, I'm generally not happy till they're all gone. Uh, we got a, I was putting the groceries away this morning, and uh, ironically, there was a pack of Nutty Bars in the groceries. And I was able to put them in their shelves along with some of my other sugary favorites because I hadn't had any today. And as long as I haven't had any today, I can control the urge. But I am not good at moderation. And once I have a pack of Nutty Bars, the little bars are going to be going, Hey, Ken, come eat me. I want you to have more. Or once I play a hand of blackjack or, uh, I don't know, have a cold beer. I have a problem stopping. And I don't think I'm alone with it. And I know everyone says everything in moderation, but I am not good at moderation. And I'll bet you there's a lot of people out there that aren't good at moderation either. And because of it, a beer or two on the weekends becomes, over the years, seven nights a week drinking a six-pack of beer. And if you're doing that, you got a problem. And you, I know I did, and I had to reevaluate things and uh, do what I could to fix it. And cutting back wasn't working, and drinking Miller Lite wasn't working, and avoiding hard liquor wasn't working. Invariably, over time, uh, my beer uh, consumption uh, was getting more and not less. And my tolerance for it was getting more and not less. And again, two and a half years ago about, uh, I stopped drinking and uh, really haven't looked back, and it feels pretty good. Got some people walking around the neighborhood in their with their dogs. Sitting on my back patio in the sunshine. Got a lot going on. 
Got beautiful weather this morning. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, Teddy. Good morning, Brian. And thank you for joining, Thomas and uh, Steve Pennington. I so appreciate you all for joining. Oh, my point was, I almost called this sobriety with Ken uh, because I thought I had a couple stories to tell. And again, I cut all these live videos up into uh, shorts and reels and TikToks and post them all over social media. And uh, some of my most popular consistently are the ones I talk about drinking too much alcohol. And uh, so I figure it's a topic that touches a lot of us and impacts a lot of us in our relationships and our health and our probably in every way possible. And if I, you know, I don't want to make this a one trick pony uh, talk show. I want to talk about anything I want, be it the weather or dogs or neighbors or silver uh, maples. Uh, but if people are asking about alcohol, I'm going to uh, go with the flow and uh, talk about or at least share my experiences a little bit uh, when it comes to drinking too much. Because uh, I certainly have experiences <laughs> when it comes to drinking too much. So I'm going to have another sip of coffee. Mm. Lisa asked how the job fair was. Um, I've been a stay-at-home dad for uh, since November. And it's harder than I knew and more stressful than I knew. And had two little beautiful babies that I love with all my heart. Uh, but sometimes I, it feels like it's more than I can handle. We had a load of groceries dropped off today. And I had my two babies screaming in the other room. And I was trying to bring in the groceries and unpack them and uh, keep the babies harmonious as possible. And honestly, I was feeling really, really stressed about it. And I think, uh, although I've enjoyed the bonding time with my kids... Uh, it's possible that my calling uh, wasn't meant to be a full-time stay-at-home dad. And I hate to say that because I feel I'm letting my babies down, uh, but it's true, and it's harder than I knew. And I feel my stress is bad for the family and bad, probably bad for the kids. And if I could do something to alleviate my stress, I'd be in a better place. Everybody involved would be in a better place. And... I'd like to do that. Um, anyway, so I went to a job fair on Saturday. It went well. Uh, most of the positions that were available, and I don't want to get into specifics because I just don't, I got a lot of people watching my videos. Some of them don't have the best intentions for me. Uh, but anyway, uh, most of the positions wouldn't, uh, were more kind of entry level or, you know, part-time or seasonal type positions. Uh, but there was a guy behind uh a sign uh, that said finance. And I went in uh, and certainly did not expect to see a guy in a suit and a tie at this job fair uh, behind a sign that said finance. And I was looking maybe for a seasonal, maybe part-time job where I could be outside and enjoying life and enjoying nature a little bit. And I talked to a few people and kind of did the numbers. And I'm going, well, you know, that sounds kind of fun. I could do it part-time. But Honestly, the uh, child care I'd have to provide uh, would be as much or more than I'm making at this part-time job. And that didn't seem to make a lot of sense. Uh, but I did go up and there was a guy that behind a sign that said finance, wearing a suit. He was taller than me, which is unusual because I'm six foot two. Rarely do I look up at other men. Uh, but I was looking up at him and we got to talking. I was sharing some of my experiences, handed him a resume, filled out an application online and uh, we're gonna see where it goes. I'm not holding my breath, but on the online application, it talked about compensation packages, and the compensation for a salary job uh, would have been enough for me to accept, uh, yeah. And uh, that felt kind of good, and hope, it, it gave me a little bit of hope uh, because again, most of my jobs in my life, I've been in sales or some capacity, waiting tables occasionally, but sales, re real estate or a stockbroker most of my life. And most of those jobs offer no salary and it's all commission. You get a huge upside. You can have huge paychecks, uh, but you can also have lean months. And I'm not at a point either. I've decided I'm not good at sales because it's not my passion or making a million dollars isn't uh, what motivates me or gets me out of bed in the morning. 
uh, or I suck at sales. But either way, I'm okay with that. People always assume, oh, you got the gift of gab. You'd be great at sales or sales is just about relationships. And I don't know. I'm great at building relationships, but I'm, I don't know. I think, and this is going to sound weird. I don't think I could be a car salesman because I'd want to sell the car to them as cheap as possible. And I don't think, even as a realtor, I felt bad knowing the work that I was going to have to do when I listed a home uh, over the next two, three months till we got to closing. I didn't see how it, I was providing fifteen or $20,000 of value uh, to the sale. And although I enjoyed the checks, don't get me wrong, uh, I didn't feel that good about it and didn't feel that much pride in what I was doing. And I want to feel good about what I'm doing and find a job that matches my skill set, whatever they may be. And because I know I'm hard work and I'm reasonably intelligent and I'm pretty good at talking. And uh, I feel somewhere out there, uh, there's got to be a need for that. And in the meantime, I'm going to keep my eyes open and my ears open and uh, uh, keep hopping on live and sharing my experiences as best I can. RJ asked, how do I feel when a video goes viral? Eh, it feels good. I mean, honestly, it probably feels, it probably feels like when I sit down at a slot machine, an old fashioned slot machine that gave out coins and you put a quarter in and then quarters would be dumping out at you for three minutes and you're wondering how much money is going to come out and you don't know. And when you see a video, and I posted a video about sobriety, I don't know, a week and a half ago, that's... Uh, uh, had about uh, 200,000 views and 2,000 likes. And, you know, if you get that many people talking about sobriety, one of the viewers is going to stop drinking, uh, that stop drinking uh, from that video. And if I can post a video and uh, if I can post a video that gets somebody to think about cutting back or slowing down or uh, what have you, uh, it's probably worthwhile, and it probably provides value. And if I can talk about the struggles I've had and the successes I've had financially or with relationships or with my own mental health uh, or with sobriety or uh, whatever, uh, hopefully my experiences can benefit somebody. And I just think social media is a really neat tool uh, to, to use to put uh, whatever message you have out there to a lot of people. Um, to a lot of people. Hello there from Cape uh, Breton, Canada. How are you? Windy City, dude. I have the same mindset. I just recently became unemployed. Thank you. Uh, well, you're welcome. I don't know if you're feeling good that you're unemployed, and I, it's certainly not a goal of mine to get my viewers to be unemployed and financially struggling. Uh, I would hope they lead a, pa excuse me, a passionate life where they feel they're contributing and also providing for their family, because that's what I'd like to do. And honestly, uh, you know, I'd like to do that better. If you are bad at moderation, is cold turkey the best option for quitting? RJ, it was the only option for me in quitting. It was the only option for me in quitting. Uh, and I talked about that a little bit ago. I had a guy reach out uh, the other day and ask, want to cut back. He and his wife were everyday drinkers, and they have two little babies, and they want to cut back. Uh, they don't want to give it up altogether. And I said, hey, cutting back wasn't an option for me. Uh, if I have a beer, I want 10. <laughs> so I better not have a beer. You know, it's fairly simple. And uh, it worked. So now I don't have a beer. I never break the seal, if you will. And if I don't have one, I don't have 10. And I will go to sleep every night uh, feeling a little bit of proud pride about that and a little bit better. And uh, again, life's not perfect. I still got issues. Oh boy, do I have issues. Uh, but uh, uh, drinking's not one of them. And just being able to say that uh, gives me the chills. Have you encountered any age discrimination or judgmental interviews about your past? Uh, certainly, is that a Josh? Well, certainly. I mean, there were times, again, I left real estate kind of quickly a year and a half ago. And <laughs> I applied uh, to a great company, uh, Costco, great company, but I was looking for a seasonal job and they probably looked at me and said, hey, I don't know, he's got a finance degree from U of I, which is a pretty good company. 
I would bet somebody, and it was a young lady interviewing me, was who would probably would have been my boss at some point, probably was looking at me and wondering if she would be comfortable being my boss. And uh, uh, I bet her answer would be no, because I'm me, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I annoy or scare or stress people out or overwhelm them with movements or talking. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I think I got a flock of geese flying by. By the way, speaking of flock of geese, I heard it or saw a video on TikTok the other day, and it was flock of seagulls, and it was the video uh, from, I don't know when they did it, 81 or 82 or 83 or something like that, and it was the song I ran, which we all know and is popular because I think the video was like a cartoon or a drawing, and... Uh, uh, I put it on my playlist and listened to it several times and uh, uh, have been enjoying it. The next song after I ran from Flock of Seagulls is Metal Health by Quiet Riot, a new addition to my playlist. Uh, RJ's asking, did I ever wake up and drink? Uh, certainly. <laughs> Probably wasn't the very first thing. I don't think I ever rolled out of bed and grabbed a beer and chugged it. But I guarantee within the first half hour, I would wake up and drink. I talked a story and did a video about it. Uh, I used to drink every day and wouldn't get good sleep and feel kind of hungover every morning. And the one thing that cures a hangover like nothing else is drinking alcohol again. And uh, so I uh, was going golfing with a buddy and we had, uh, I don't know, a case of Coors Light, which wasn't my normal beer, but <laughs> beggars and choosers. Uh, and probably had six before I left the house. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, probably made me enjoy the round of golf, but probably made me do dumb things, including even getting to the golf course uh, that morning. And again, I think there was a time when I was drinking every day. I could drink a Coors Light or a Bud Light or a Miller Light all day from morning till night and not pass out because it's a lower alcohol percentage than a regular beer. And I was used to just drinking regular beer. And, uh, uh, yeah, that almost tasted like water. It was refreshing. Uh, Dennis said, how am I doing? I'm doing well, Dennis. Thank you so much for asking. RJ says, do I still have golf clubs? Yes, I do. Uh, it's funny. I posted a video about never having been tempted to drink. And I wanted to put, like, an asterisk at the end of the video. Because I golfed one time last year. And I mean, I'm slightly tempted all the time, but not seriously tempted. But the one time, and I wasn't seriously tempted, I was at a golf outing with a buddy who owns a construction company. And they had beer carts going around and giving us beer cans or beers if we wanted, or we had drink tickets or what have you. But on the like 13th hole, it was a par three. I think I pulled it into the water on that par three. Uh, they had a keg of beer in a cooler on tap. And I forget what the beer was, but it was kind of an amber beer. And all my guys in my group were filling up these nice, tall glasses, an amber-looking beer. And I said, hey, I don't get tempted very often, but that looks really good. I'll have you know, I didn't drink, <laughs> but I wanted to. <laughs> it's not fair. Well, I don't know. When you see the beer coming out of the tap and you're going, golf course, hot, golf out. <laughs> it was pretty tempted. Uh, did I ever relapse after going cold turkey? Great question. No, I have not had a beer or a smoke uh, since October 28, 2021. And I've really never even been close. I've had, you know, beers in my hand. I've got, I know, champagne, and I bet you I could find some other alcohol in the house. And my two babies are sleeping, and nobody would know it if I do it. And every day as I'm driving around, I drive by 10 liquor stores and 20 bars. And if I wanted to drink, I would. Uh, so I haven't relapsed. <laughs> but again, when I was on the golf course and they were pouring whatever that, I think it was like some Sam Adams or something, and nice head on the beer, and it looked refreshing. <laughs> I did kind of want some that day. So, uh, but anyway. Again, I feel kind of bad saying this. It really hasn't been hard for me. It really hasn't been hard. And I think I was fortunate not to be physically addicted to alcohol or uh, pot uh, because I gave them both up 
on the same day, and I was an everyday user of both. Uh, Windy City Dude says he's re relapsed a few times. I feel social gatherings are a trigger. Uh, what I, I would assume social gatherings would be a trigger. Uh, yeah, no, I used to be a realtor, and there were so many social gatherings in real estate and so many parties I'd go to, and uh, I don't know. Again, if I had one beer, I didn't want to stop at one. If I, if I thought I could drink a beer or two or even three maybe and stop and a few days later have another three beers, I probably wouldn't worry about it. I mean, wouldn't worry about it. Uh, but that wasn't me. I was a guy that if I had one, would have 10. And uh, having 10 is a good way to be. So, uh, yeah. Well, Windy City, dude, I guess you know what you got to do. Uh, you know, my first thought is, yeah, I feel in my mind I'm pretty strongly committed uh, to not drinking. And therefore, I mean, my social life is one-tenth of what it used to be. I used to go to my buddies or out to dinner or out to the bars probably five nights a week. And when I didn't go to the bars or to a buddies or out to dinner, I'd probably, uh, you know, be drinking at home and be drinking beforehand. Uh, so <laughs> didn't matter whether I was going out or not. You know, if there was a golf tournament on and I had a 12 pack of Heineken in my fridge uh, and uh, I don't know, some pot running around, it was, uh, I was excited about my Sunday. And uh, again, I think the hardest thing I said this the other day for me, or the worst thing about it, hangovers might have been number two. Uh, but number one was just the constant craving to go get more beer or to go drink another beer. And I felt it yesterday again when I was at Starbucks and I had opened up the box of Nutty Bars and I had two packs of Nutty Bars left in uh, my scooter, which I rode. And I went out intentionally had no effort at resistance and said, I'm going to eat these last two. So the temptation is gone and, uh, did and, uh, felt fine doing it. Cause I knew they'd be gone and uh, knew the temptation would be gone with them. So, yeah, I used to do that with beer and pot. It was horrible. I, you know, I'd be frustrated. I knew it wasn't good for me. I'd see there's three left in the fridge or whatever. And I'd purposely finish them off in my mind, probably kidding myself that it'd be the last time I drank. They'd be gone and I wouldn't be drinking anymore. And uh, I don't know, I'd either send somebody else out to go get some more or go get some more the next day and do it all over again. And I'll tell you what, if you're always doing it all over again, uh, life's not that fun. Hmm. Well, I don't know how long I've talked or if I was planning to talk this long. I was pl thinking about calling this sobriety with Ken. I've called it stay at home with Ken since sobriety seems to be such a hot topic. And I've got a box of Pampers, just the cardboard box of Pampers sitting over there. And uh, you guys don't want to hear about <laughs> me changing diapers or filling up bottles or laying my babies down to sleep. And I think uh, just the lessons I've learned in sobriety uh, probably... Uh, could really help some people, and uh, hopefully do, uh, hopefully do, and uh, I don't know, that's part of the reason I do it, I feel uh, I'd like to help some people, and I think God has given me a whole bunch of challenges and a whole bunch of experiences, uh, and an ability to tell a story, uh, to put them together, and to share my story in a way that helps, inspires, educates, amuses, entertains uh, others. And uh, that's why I'm doing it and what I'm doing. And I have fun doing it and it feels good. Uh, yeah, it feels good. So I'm going to have one, my last swig of quite cool coffee. I'm going to pour in another cup. going to go inside, going to clean some of my house. Uh, going to get my afternoon ready for my baby's waking up. They'll be waking up in maybe an hour or two. And uh, uh, I don't know, looking forward to hopefully having a couple of hours quiet in the house so I can get some things done and not keep the uh, babies off each other. Bill said, how can uh, one just stop? Uh, one can just stop. I think you really have to make a decision. I've heard you really got to hit rock bottom. Uh, and you never know where rock bottom is. A lot of uh, bottoms have uh, uh, 
uh, a lot of uh, 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 bottoms have secret compartments where you can get lower. And uh, it's amazing how low you can get. And one day I decided I'd gotten low enough. And I did never said I'd never drink again. Uh, but the next day I said, hey, I'm going to try tomorrow without drinking. And uh, really have gotten on a pretty good streak two and a half years ago now. And uh, have no intention uh, to drink. Don't count the days. Don't count. You know, I round up. I say two and a half years. It'll probably be two and a half years in the end of April. Uh, but I don't count the days or the months or anything like that. I feel when I get the urge to drink, I just need a distraction, bike ride, a jog or something. Well, I'd say distractions are probably good. Uh, but if, and again, maybe you have a different issue than I did. I think I'm fortunate not to have any physical craving. Uh, if I thought about it, yeah, maybe a buzz would feel pretty good right now. But I just know I wouldn't, I wouldn't have two beers. It wouldn't do me anything if I did. I'd have eight and have some more tomorrow. And that's just not a price I'm willing to pay uh, in my life anymore. And it was a price I paid for too many years. And uh, uh, I don't want to do it anymore. So it's an easy decision. And I made the decision and uh, stopped. You know, yeah, yeah, it's not nothing's, you know, I miss going out to dinner, maybe having a glass of wine, but it wouldn't be a glass of wine. A glass of wine's never a glass of wine, at least not for me and not for a lot of people. It's two bottles of wine and a six pack uh, when I get home. Uh, RJ asked, have I ever been belligerent? Oh, yeah. Belligerent's my middle name, especially when I'm drinking. Kenneth Belligerent Tracy. I was belligerent. I got a DUI in August of 2019. That wasn't my low, and that's not why I stopped. I kept drinking after that, uh, but I did. And uh, I was probably like a lot of guys, the cops pull over, and was probably belligerent. And the guy was just doing his job and keeping me safe and the neighborhood safe. And I was probably belligerent as heck to him because I thought he'd trap me or trick me or uh, what have you. I didn't believe I was going as fast as he said. And uh, I was belligerent to him and probably the woman at the check-in. And I think I'm probably... So I felt horrible the next day. I woke up with a DUI on my head. Uh, but the thing I may have felt worse about uh, was how I was a jerk to the cop and to the check-in cop and I wrote them both apology cards and sent them out to them and uh, said I was sorry for being a jerk and I know they were just doing their job uh yeah so uh was that your first time drinking and driving RJ my first time my first time being caught it was my first time being caught uh it was my first time being caught I guarantee it uh, but certainly not my first time drinking and driving. I think I've read that the average person that gets a DUI has averaged 82 times drinking and driving before that arrest. And I'll bet it's more. I'll bet it's more. You start to feel like you're above the radar or they can't see you or you'll just obey the speed limit or what have you. And I watched a scary movie the other day called uh, Shot Caller. If anyone uh, is looking for a movie that's pretty good, it's a prison-ish movie. Uh, there's a movie, I believe it's called Shot Caller. It's on Netflix right now. It's about a guy that was a stockbroker, went out to dinner with his wife and a couple of their friends, had a couple bottles of wine at the table, maybe a few bottles of wine at the table. He was driving home. He's fist bumping his buddy in back, and they, he runs a red light, and his buddy... Uh, gets killed and everyone else in the car is hurt. He ends up going to prison for two years, joins a prison gang, and his life goes to crap. And it's the story of his life going to crap for a bad decision, a normal guy uh, joining a, a prison gang out of necessity, and how bad his life got, and him taking power over this gang over time. And... Uh, uh, 
yeah, it's called Shot Caller. Shot Caller. And it's sort of violent, uh, but I think it's definitely worth a watch. And uh, uh, again, this guy's life spiraled out of control uh, from uh, a bad decision. And uh, that's no good. How many beers d did it take to get to point oh eight? Uh, it's interesting. You take a D. You, you gotta go to alcohol counseling um, after you get a DUI, and it's kind of embarrassing. And it's Saturday for like four hours for I don't know eight weeks or I forget how long it was. I'm just saying that it might have been more or less, um, but it was kind of embarrassing. And you'd sit in a class and you talk to a guy who's kind of an old dude that used to drink a lot and now almost doesn't drink at all, but still occasionally will. And he talks about that. You can drink, uh, I think the numbers work out to 150 pounds. If you're a 150 pound man, uh, you can drink one beer an hour or one drink an hour uh, without it being in your bloodstream. Uh, so as long as you only have one an hour, uh, you it, it won't show. Uh, just be careful. You're not drinking strong drinks or strong beers because uh, that can be a, another bad decision that you want to avoid. So, anyway, I've talked for almost an hour. Uh, I love the sound of the geese flying overhead, and I want to thank you for joining me on this Wednesday. I talked a little longer, but I thought I had stuff to talk about, and I appreciate you guys for joining me uh, today and for all the great questions and uh, uh, following along in my story. And... Uh, I hope your week is going well. Again, it's Wednesday, and I hope your week's going well. I hope you are uh, had a great night's sleep last night. I uh, uh, hope you're feeling good. I hope you are loving yourself, and I hope you are forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.